So then, in the course of the 18th century, the 1700s, Shakespeare's plays are performed more and more frequently, they're edited more and more frequently, people write about them more and more. He's becoming the centre of English literature. But it was really towards the end of the century, and with one event in particular, that he took on cult status, quasi-divine status. David Garrick was the leading actor in 18th century England. He had originally been a pupil of Dr Samuel Johnson. They had walked to London together, and Johnson had begun his career as a man of letters, including the production of that Shakespeare edition that we were looking at. Garrick took to the stage and very quickly surpassed all other actors. And he played all the great Shakespearean roles. Indeed, he began to think of himself as Shakespeare's elected representative on earth. It got to the 1760s, the bicentenary of Shakespeare's birth, and Garrick began to think about ways of celebrating it. It took a while for him to get organised. He should have done something in 1764. That was the 200th anniversary. In fact, it wasn't until 1769 that he was able to organise the great Shakespeare Jubilee. And it took place here in Stratford-upon-Avon, which until that point was a tiny market town with only a very, very few Shakespeare fanatics coming through maybe to look at the grave. With Garrick's Jubilee, Stratford became a tourist destination. Indeed, we could say that the very idea of cultural tourism of going to the shrine, the birthplace of a famous person, whether it be Mozart or Napoleon. That very idea began with Garrick's Jubilee and the idea of a pilgrimage to Stratford and a celebration of Shakespeare in the place where he was born and where he died. Everybody who was anybody in London society came to the Jubilee. There was huge publicity about it. The press was now beginning to take off. There were daily newspapers for the first time. And there were prints and engravings and caricatures. A real sense of a, a public discourse about events in society, about cultural events. Arrangements were made for musical performances. Garrick performed a great ode. A temple was erected by the banks of the Avon. There was going to be a horse race. The only thing that was not part of the festivities was a performance of a Shakespeare play. There were some choice extracts, but no complete play. At the centre of the Jubilee celebration was a grand procession through the streets of Stratford. People dressed up as Shakespearean characters. And indeed, the tradition of an annual celebration of Shakespeare with a procession in Stratford continues to this day. Every April, on the anniversary of his birthday, there's a procession through the streets, ending with a laying of flowers at his grave in the Church of Holy Trinity. Like many great English events, the weather intervened. The final day, the horse race was completely washed out. The Avon flooded. The whole thing was, frankly, a bit of a disaster. But people went back to London with a very strong sense that Stratford was on the map and that Shakespeare was no longer just the finest English dramatist, but was the god of English culture. Garrick himself took great pleasure in the publicity that came from the Jubilee. A play about the Jubilee was performed on the London stage. And of course, as at all such tourist events, there was good trade in memorabilia. Here at the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust, They've got a whole host of memorabilia from that original Garrick Jubilee of 1769. Here's a rather fine striped scarf, the sort of thing you'd now pick up in a gift shop. But this is an original from the Jubilee to be worn, perhaps, in that very procession. And here is a medal, a commemorative medal. It has a ribbon, so you can pin it on. And on the front of it is an engraved, embossed image of Shakespeare, with words going round it, we shall not look upon his like again. Words from Hamlet applied to Shakespeare. And let's have a look at the back. It says, Jubilee at Stratford, in honour and to the memory of Shakespeare, 
September 1769. D.G. Steward. David Garrick, steward. The steward, like the organizer of a great household. He was the steward of the event. And in many ways, Garrick saw himself as Shakespeare's steward, the guardian of the shrine. 